show our faithful advocate before our Lord Jesus Christ that he forgive us our sins. As a prayer of the six hour of this blessed day, offer to Christ our King and our God, beseeching Him to forgive us our sins, Psalms, our teacher David, the Prophet, may His blessing be with us all. Amen. In the multitude, he went up on the mountain, and when he saw he was seated, his disciple came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught, and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of God, a kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure, the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for the righteousness' sake, for there is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when they reveal reveal you and persecute you and they all kinds of evils against you falsely for my sake rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven for so they persecuted the prophet who were before you you are so you are the salt of the earth but if the salt loses its flavor how shall it be seasoned it is not it is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trembled uh, under the foot by man. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on the hill cannot be hidden, nor do they light the lamp and put it under the basket, but on lampstand, and it gives light to all you are in the house, that your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Glory be to God forever. Amen. We ask Allah to be the peace of God in Christ. We ask you, O Messiah, to be the peace of God in Christ. Because you have been forgiven and forgiven. Oh, my God, we are the peace of God in the day of the day. Then you have been forgiven and forgiven. Oh, my God, we are the peace of God in Christ. Oh, my God, we are the peace of God in Christ. Oh, my God, we are the peace of God in Christ. أنا صرخت إلى الله ورب سمعني اللهم استجب صلاتي ولا ترفض طلباتي التفت إلي واسمعني عشية وبكر وقت الزور كلام يقول اسمع صوتي ويخلص نفسي بسلام زور سبت إنكي يسوع المسيح لأن صمرت على الصريف الساعة السادسة قتلت الخشب الخطيب الخشب وحيث الماد موتك الذي هو الإنسان الذي خلقت بيدك الذي مات بالخطايا اختلى وبعنا بنعم في شفاء المحيا مسامير سمرت بجا في جسر الطاري خذوا كل من تشل العمل هيولية والشهوات العبد ذكر أحكامك السماية كرافاته كعيك استسيون استونيون نام إذ ليس لنا دلة ولا حجة لما عزل من أجل كسر الخطايا وسوء أفعلنا فنحن بك نتوسل إلى الذي يد منك إلى العذراء كثيرة شفاعتك أو ما بول عندهم خلصنا بم الطرف ويخطأ من شفاعتك عند الذي يولد منك لأن روح مقدرة خلاص تعلم نجمي كي ينقذنا فهل تدرك نرى فاتك سأنت مسكننا جدا عنا الله مخلص من أجل مجد اسمك يا رب نجي نغفر وخطينا من أجل اسمك القدوم كاني كاني كاستوسيون استونيون نامين صار تخلص فوسع تقول يا مسيح له عندما وصلت إليك طالت الروح للصليب بل هذا كل الأمور تصفق إلى مجد لك يا رب موسيقى <تصفيق> We exalt you, the mother of the true life. We glorify you, Saint Nicholas, for you brought heaven to us to save the whole world. He came and saved our souls. Glory be to Most Holy King Christ, the Father, the Apostle, the Crown, the Martyrs, the Blessed from the Church, the Church. We proclaim the Holy Trinity, one God, and we worship Him, glorify Him. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, both the Son. We believe in one God. God the Father, the Father, the Creator, heaven and earth, and all things seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, begotten the Father before all ages. 
Lord of light, true God of true God, God and creator of us with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit, and the Virgin Mary became a man. This was for us, 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 for from the Father, but the Father says, which glorified, who spoke with our prophets, and the Holy Catholic Apostolic Church, we confess from our Christian motion sins, we look for the resurrection dead and life the age to come. Amen. O Lord, hear us, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, Amen. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ismaan Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ismaan Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, Ismaan Ya Rabbu Arham. Kriya Laison, Kriya Laison, 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 Ya Rabbu
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one and Christ Jesus our Lord. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Yani, how the blessed of this feast, the feast of the Theophany and manifestation of our Lord God, uh, yani, make the feast more joyful, the presence, the presence of his uh, eminence. Uh, and by Yusuf with us, and also Abu Nafalexinus. Make the feast another feast, actually. Uh, very happy for the servant who came to be. Servant in the church, not only Sunday school. Servant. Servant in the church, anyone really loves the church and serve the church. Board of deacon, servant of the church. Urban group, the servant of the church. Any meeting, Bible study, and only Decoration of the church is the servant, uh, servant of the church. Take care of the church is the servant of the church. All of the, the congregation should be the servant of the church. So we have this blessed uh, time with Amber Yusuf. First uh, lecture will be in English about God, the Triune, the Trinity, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Very important, some yeah, information we should know about the Trinity. Then we have a break. And then we have Arabic uh, Q&A with Sayyidna about how the servant will be filled from the Holy Spirit. Then we distribute for you the uh, book uh, in English and Arabic, which really we study this year together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. I wish you all a very blessed and happy Epiphany Feast. When our Lord Jesus Christ was baptized in the Jordan River, at the hands of St. John the, B the Baptist, the Holy Trinity was manifested. And that's why this feast we call it Theophania, because Theo means God, as we say, Agios o Theos. Phania means manifestation. So we call this feast the Feast of Theophany, because the Triune God, the Trinity, Triune, Tri means three, Yun one, three in one the triune God was manifested in, the, in that day. But what somet why sometimes we call it epiphany? What's the difference between epiphany and theophany? Epi means from above. For example, this layer of skin, we call it epiderm. So epi means from above. So, and, and phania means manifestation. So epiphania means the feasts in which there is manifestation from above. So the incarnation, part of the Epiphania. Circumcision is part of the Epiphania. The uh, Theophany is part of the Epiphania. But because the manifestation of the Trinity from above happened on the day of baptism, so now it is referred to to it as 
epiphania. So epiphania or theophania, both the same. Epiphania, the manifestation from above, from heaven. Theophania is the divine manifestation. And I'm sure you know that God the Father spoke from the heavens and said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And God the Son was in the Jordan River, and God the Holy Spirit appeared as a dove alighting on the head of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is one in essence, but triple or three in persons, although we like to use the word hypostasis more the, than the word person. Just to explain what do I mean. By the way, there is no metaphor at all can describe the Trinity. But we will give you some metaphors to explain what does it mean one in essence and three in hypostasis and how the three are one. For example, if you have Nicholas and bracelet and ring, the three made of gold. So we can say the essence of the ring and the bracelet and the necklace are the same. Three made of gold, one essence. But they are different and they are separate from each other. So this metaphor explained to you how three things have the same essence. But it doesn't explain how they are one. If you are speaking about the light and the heat and the sun, they are one together. But the essence is not the same. So the example of the sun, the light, and the heat can make us understand what do we mean by three in one. But the problem with this metaphor that these three are not the same. Sorry, uh, yeah, 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 the essence of these three are not the same. The metaphor of the bracelet, ring, and necklace will explain to you what do I mean the same essence. But the problem with this metaphor, they are separate and they are different from each other. So, that's why we, we call God triunity, triune, tri-hypostatical, trinity one in essence, three hypostases in one usaya. Usaya is the Greek word of essence. And hypostasis, when at the end it is S-E-S, -E -S, that's the plural. The singular S-I-S. -S. So hypostasis, S-I-S, -S, that's the plural. One hypostasis, three hypostasis. Hypo literally means a sub. Stasis means stance. So hypostasis means like a person, who I am. And we as human being, we have some es same essence, all of us. But we are different in hypostasis. Hypostasis, who, what made me, and by Yusuf. What made you, George, or Peter, or Mark? So hypostasis refers to who you are. What is under your stance? That's the word hypostasis. But the metaphor of three persons explain again the essence, but it doesn't explain the unity. Because three persons are not one.
So, each, if we speak about three persons, Mark, Peter, and John, when we speak about the attributes of their essence, it will be similar. Because it is the attribute of the humanity. But each one has his own personal att attribute. This person is tall, this person is short, this person wears glasses, this person, etc. This person is physician, this person is a lawyer, this person is accountant, etc. So, when we speak about the three hypostases, they have personal or hypostatic attributes. These personal or hypostatic attributes are very unique for each one. So there is something unique about the Father, something very unique about the Son, and something very unique about the Holy Spirit. What are these hypostatic attributes? The Father is unbegotten. And by the way, in the fraction of the Feast of Theophany, at the end we say that we may cry to you who is not created without beginning unbegotten. And one time somebody sent me a text message, there is a mistake in the fraction. I told him what? How we say unbegotten? We say begotten of the Father before all ages. He's confusing the Son with the Father. So I told him, no. Here we are speaking to the Father, not to the Son. The Son is unbegotten. Sorry, the Father is unbegotten. But the Son is begotten. So what's unique about the Father? That he is unbegotten. He is the source. And the Son, what's unique about the Son? That he is begotten from the Father. And what's unique about the Holy Spirit? That he proceeds from the Father. We cannot say the Son proceeds. We cannot say the Father proceeds. We cannot say the Holy Spirit is begotten. So what's unique about the Father? He is the origin, the source. From whom the Son is begotten and the Holy Spirit proceeds. The revelation of Trinity exalts Christianity without comparison above any other religion or any other confession of faith. Because simple monotheism, the religions that believe in just, there is a God. This God cannot be relational. Because one exists by himself. In order to have relation, there has to be another. So if God is just monotheism, not trinity, then there is no relation within himself or with us. Because if there is a relation it started with the creation of the humanity, then this relation is something new for God. And means also God is not self-sufficient. He needed to create us in order to have a relationship. But when we speak about God as a trinity, there is relationship between the three hypostases, even before the creation of the world. As we read in John chapter 17, the son was speaking to the father and he told to him, the love with which you loved me before the creation of the world. So there is relation between the Father and the Son. Relationship of love. 
So this dogma of Trinity indicates the fullness of the mystical in world life in God. In world life means the life with himself and with the other two hypostases. God doesn't need to create us to be satisfied in relationship. God is love. And the love of God cannot merely be extended to the world created by him. But there is love between the three hypostases even before the creation of the world. <coughs> so in the Holy Trinity, this love is directed within the divine life also before the creation of the cosmos. And this dogma also, the Trinity, indicates the closeness of God to the world. In other religions, they speak about God who is above us. And that's it. But in Christianity, yes, God is above us. God is with us. God is in us. God is above us, God the Father. No one has seen the Father. But he connects with us through his Son. God the Father is the ever-flowing source. He is the foundation of all being. He is the Father of all mercies. But he sent his Son to be with us, Emmanuel, in order through the Son, we can connect to the Father. So Emmanuel, God with us, is the Son, who for the sake of the divine love has manifested himself to us as man, so that we might know and see with our own eyes that God is with us, Emmanuel. And when he sent the Holy Spirit, God is in us. You are the temple of God. And the Holy Spirit is within you. He is within us by his power and grace. That is the Holy Spirit who fills all things, who is the giver of life and the treasury of good things, as we say in the third hour of the Igbeya, the treasury of all good things. Also, the three persons or the three hypostases are not simply forms or isolated manifestation or just attribute or activity. Some people try to explain the Trinity like the vapor, ice, and water. But this is a heretical explanation because vapor, ice, and water are three forms. Three forms. So the Father does not change his form to be the Son, then change his form to be the Holy Spirit, like how the water can be vapor or can be ice. No, they are beings. Being called the Father, another being called the Son, another being called the Holy Spirit. Also, isolated manifestation means what some people explain Trinity. In the Old Testament, God the Father. During the incarnation, he became the Son. Then after ascension, he became the Holy Spirit. This means three manifestations. Like somebody would like to explain Trinity, so he say, you are a father to your children, and you are a son to your parents, and you are a brother to your siblings. So the Trinity is like this. No, that's heresy. Trinity is not like this. Because here, it is different manifestation. 
to different relations. But the Father is a being, the Son is a being, the Holy Spirit is a being. We say in the creed, true God of true God. So, the three person or three hypostases are contained in the very unity of God's essence. The three hypostases have the same attribute of the divine essence. Do you remember when I told you, we as human beings, we have the same attribute of humanity? But each hypostasis, each person, have a unique attribute. So they have the same attribute of divinity, the essence, but each one is distinguished in the hypostatical or personal attribute. To explain this, the attributes of the divinity, of the essence, God is a loving God, God is true God, wisdom, love, life, might, prudence. Some examples of the attribute of the essence of God. But I told you there are hypostatical attributes, which are very unique. What's very unique to the Father is paternity. He is the origin, the source. And what's unique about the Son, the filiation, He is begotten. And what's unique about the Holy Spirit is spiration. He is proceeding. So if we put both together, as you see in the table in front of you, take the truth. So we can say about the Father, He is the true one. From Him, the truth is begotten. And the spirit of truth is proceeding. The Father is the wise one. From him the wisdom is begotten. And the spirit of wisdom proceeds. God is the lover of mankind. From him love is begotten. And the spirit of love proceeds. He is the living one. From him the life is begotten and the spirit of life proceeds. He is the mighty one. From him the might is begotten and the spirit of might proceeds. He is the prudent one. From him prudence is begotten and the spirit of prudence proceeds. That's why when we refer to the Holy Spirit, we say spirit of truth. The son, when he referred about himself, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. When we refer to the Father, we say the lover of mankind, the Almighty. And the Holy Trinity actually there are many references in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Just I will share with you few references, not all the references. Like in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Uh, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So here plural. It is not a singular person is speaking in plural. In some language, like in Arabic language, a person can speak in plural to exalt himself. I can say, we, so and so, referring to myself. But in Hebrew, this doesn't exist. In Hebrew, if it's plural, then it is more than one person. So here God said, let us, let us, not let me, make man in our image after our likeness. What about Genesis 3.22? And the Lord God said, Behold, Adam is become as one of us. 
one of us who are us here the trinity to know good and evil psalm 2 verse 7 the father is speaking to the son thou art my son this day i have begotten thee which day let me explain the affiliation when we say the son is begotten from the father this doesn't mean it is an event happened and ended no when we say the light is begotten from the sun s-u-n so the light all the time all the time coming from the sun in the same way the sun s-o-n all the time is begotten from the father so this day doesn't refer to a certain day but refers to a continuous filiation from the father psalm 33 verse 6 by the word that is the son of the lord that is the father where the heavens established and all the might of them by the spirit of his mouth so here you can have the son the Father and the Holy Spirit. Psalm 142, 12 Thy good spirit shall lead me in the land of uprightness. Thy, speaking to the Father, good spirit. So the spirit of the Father. Isaiah 48, 16, it's a beautiful verse. The Lord God, the Father, and his spirit, the Holy Spirit, has sent me. Then to the Son to the world. So it is very clear. The Father and the Son sent me. Sorry, the Father and the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, sent me. Sent to the Son. In New Testament, Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit very clear John 15 26 but when the comforter that is the Holy Spirit is come whom I the son Jesus will send unto you from the father so here the Holy Spirit and the son and the father even the spirit of truth which proceeds from the father he shall testify of me of the son he the holy spirit shall testify of me of the son i want here to explain two different words the word send and the word the proceeds proceed is an eternal action the son the, sorry the holy spirit is proceeding from the father all the time as I told you, the Son is begotten from the Father all the time. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father all the time. Sending is different than procession. Sending happened in time. When the Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to heaven, he sent the Holy Spirit. That's why he said, whom I will send unto you from the Father. So sending is different from procession. I think the Catholic Church confuses sending with procession. That's why in their creed they added who proceed from the Father and the Son. It's very clear in John 15 the Holy Spirit proceeds only from the Father. Not from the Son. And I told you, the son, filiation means begotten. So in Latin, the son is filioque. So proceed from the father and the son. When you, you, you read about the great, greatest schism between East and West, that happened in year 1054, it was you know, like about the filioque. What's the filioque? 
when they added the son to the creed. When the Catholic Church added the word of the Son to the Creed, and they said the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. That's why the East is split from the West. The Orthodox is split from the Catholic. And this happened in the 11th century and is known by the Great Schism. The Great Schism. So, sending. Yes, the Son sent the Holy Spirit, but proceeding, he proceeds from the Father. Second Corinthians 13, verse 14, The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the Son, and the love of God the Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Here we can see the trend. First John 5, 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. What about patristic writings? Of course, there are many early church fathers who spoke about the Trinity. St. Athanasius says, Neither can we imagine three substances separated from each other. Let me stop at the word substances. If we go back to the word hypostasis, I told you literally hypostasis, the word hypo means sub, stasis means stance. So literally, I can translate hypostasis to the word substance. Because hypo means a sub. Stasis means a stance. So hypostasis can be translated substance. But, hold on. The use of the word, the use of the word is different through different centuries. Now when I say the substance, substance refers to what? To the essence in our current time. When I say, what is the substance of this cross? Gonna tell me, wood. So this is actually the essence. But back then in the fourth century, substance did not refer to the essence, but it refers to, it referred to the hypostasis, the person. You understand? So when you read actually in patristic writings, they use the word substance as synonymous with hypostasis, please don't be confused. Because the use of the word changes it from time to time. In the fourth century, it meant hypostasis. But nowadays, it means essence. I hope this is clear. So when St. Athanasius said, neither can we imagine three substances, means three hypostases, separated from each other. We cannot imagine that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit separated from each other, as a result from their bodily nature in the case of men. When you speak about three persons, they are separated from each other. But when we speak about the three hypostases, they are not separated from each other. Lest we hold a plurality of God like the heathen. Polytheism. To believe in more than one God. No, one God, but three hypostases. And San Asanasis used this metaphor. He says, if you have a spring of water and from this spring there is river flows so the spring is not the river but both are one and both have the same essence right but just as a river produced from a well or a spring 
is not separate and yet there are in fact two visible objects and two names we have the spring and the river but they are one united with each other and one in essence but how this cannot be used as a metaphor for the trinity because these are two but the trinity are three and as I told you there is no metaphor at all that can describe trinity you have to put more than one metaphor together in order to understand what trinity is Saint Asanisius continues and says for neither is the father the son the father is not the son that's why I told you when we say before in the Old Testament he is called the father and then in the New Testament is called the son and after ascension called the Holy Spirit that's a heresy the father is not the son nor the son is the father for the father is the father of the son that is the hypostatical attribute of the father and the son is the son of the father that is the hypostatical attribute he is begotten for like as the will is not a river the will is not a river nor the river a well or the spring but both are one and the same water which is conveyed in a channel from the well to the river one in essence and united with each other San Asanasis continues so the father deity passes into the son that's the essence without flow and without division here we see the river passes from the well to the river but no when we say the deity of the father passes to the son without flowing it's not like how the water comes from the spring and flow into the river without flowing and without division there is no division between the deity of the father and the son the other one for the lord says i came out from the father and i'm come john 16 28 so i came out does it mean the essence of the father or the date of the father is flowing into the sun no sometimes when it is difficult to describe something you say it is not like this and it's not like this and it's not like this but can you tell me how it looks like no word can describe that's that's why many times when we speak about God <coughs> we say without beginning without end without time timeless you know he's not this and he's not this and he's not this and he's not this but because there is no word San Asanasis continue but he is ever with the father and he is in the bosom of the father not was ever the bosom of the father void of the deity of the son from eternity to eternity so the specific relation of the son to the father from whom he is begotten is precisely as son this relationship is quite different from the relationship of the holy spirit like breath proceeds from his mouth you may tell me why we don't use the word the holy spirit proceeds from uh, the holy spirit begotten from the father why you are using two different words begotten for the son and uh, proceeds from for the Holy Spirit because these are two different relationships if you ask me how different I will tell you I don't know but they are different like 
the different the heat comes from the sun S U N is different how the light comes from the sun. The sun drives from the father in a way appropriate to the sun as sun. And this we call it generation. Generation. But the spirit drives from the father in a way appropriate to the spirit as the spirit we call it procession. So the son unoriginally begotten. What do you mean unoriginally? He's not the origin. The origin is the father. But he is begotten. And the spirit unbegottenly proceeding. Unbegottenly means he is not begotten from the father. But he proceeds from the father. And both quite ineffably. You, you cannot describe. I think they asked St. Athanasius what is the difference between generation and procession. He told them, if you can explain to me how St. Mary gave birth to Christ without seed of man, I will answer you the difference. So, what he was trying to say, it is a mystery. And usually we refer to God incomprehensible. He is above our comprehension. The father who is himself without generation or origination, so the father, we cannot say he is begotten or he has origin in the son. Of course not. The father is the one principle or the one origin and the cause of the Son and the Spirit. Because the Son is begotten from the Father and the Spirit proceeds from the Father, but without any difference in time. Like the heat and the light come from the Son, S-U-N, with no difference in time. Although in such a way that there is no interval of existence, no interval of existence. Never ever the Father exists without the Son and the Holy Spirit. Never ever. No interval of existence or time or space between them. There is no before and after in the order of their being. You cannot say the Father is before the Son and the Son is after the Father. No. And the community of nature, the, the essence, the one Oseya, the essence, is not disturbed by the distinction of the person. Yes, we have three hypostases, distinguished hypostases, but this does, did not make the essence different. So the essence is the same. The one Oseya is the same. And the particularization, note, of the persons, what make the Son particularly the Son, and what make the Holy Spirit particularly the Holy Spirit, are not confound this particularization of the Son and the Holy Spirit and the Father, not confounded in the community of their being. Not because they are one essence, then there is no clear distinguish between the Son and the Father and the Holy Spirit. So now we finished the theological part. And I hope it's clear. But what does this mean to me? This manifestation of the Trinity, what does this mean to me personally? How can I benefit from this? That's what we're going to discuss right now. Our relationship with the Holy Trinity. The Son is the Bridegroom. Many verses in the scripture speak about the Son. And John the Baptist said about the Son, he is the Bridegroom. And John the Baptist, he is the friend of the bridegroom. If there is bridegroom, then there is a bride. 
Who is the bride? Us. The church. The assembly of the believers. And usually, when there is a wedding, there is one who officiates the wedding. So the marriage between the son and the church is done through the Holy Spirit. Through the Holy Spirit and the sacraments of the church. And the marriage goes in three steps. The first step is the proposal and the engagement. Second step is the civil marriage, when you go and marry in the court. Third step is the consummation of the marriage, when they live together as one, one flesh. That's why when you read in the Bible about St. Mary, she is the wife of Joseph, the word wife is accurate because there was civil marriage between Joseph and Mary, although this marriage never ever consummated. They never ever lived as husband and wife. So legally, she is his wife. In our relationship with Christ, in his incarnation, he proposed to us. He asked us to marry him. When we accept the Lord Jesus Christ to be our Lord, our Savior, our God, our groom, then the process of Betrothal starts. The first step in the process of the betrothal is to prepare us to be fit to this bridegroom. Our bridegroom is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So the Holy Spirit in the sacrament of confession purifies us and cleanses us from our sins to be a suitable bride for the bridegroom. As we read in Ephesians chapter 5, to present the bride without blemish to the bridegroom. Then, in baptism, we are born of water and spirit. We are born a spiritual birth, rebirth. Not of flesh, but of spirit. As the Lord said to Nicodemus, he who is born of flesh is flesh, means carnal. But he who is born of the spirit is spirit, which means spiritual. To be bride of the bridegroom, we need to be born of the spirit. And in baptism, we put on Christ. As we read in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10, we put on new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. And St. Paul said, you were baptized, you put on Christ. Then in the confirmation, my own, the Holy Spirit dwells in us. You are the temple of God and the Holy Spirit abides in you. And then we become members of Christ. As we read in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 30, we are bones of his bones and flesh of his flesh. You can see the unity here. That's why when St. Paul spoke about the sin of adultery, he said, can I take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? What are the members of Christ? It's me. 
because now we are members of his members and bones of his bone, flesh of his flesh. Then in communion, the Holy Spirit descends on the bread and wine and on us too. Abuna in his prayer says, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon the bread and the wine. To change the elements into the body and blood of Christ and to make us one with Christ. He who eats my body and drinks my blood abide in me and I in him. So, through this betrothal, we become one with Christ. So God proposed to us, we accept this proposal, then the Holy Spirit will make like the betrothal. But the consummation of the marriage, the full union with God, this happened in the second coming. That's why we, we hear about the supper of the wedding of the Lamb in the second coming. And St. Paul said, we are betrothed. I betrothed you. So now in the stage of betrothal, the full union in the second coming of Christ. And now Christ is the Son. He is the Son of the Father. So in him, we become children of the Father. Because we are one with Christ. Do you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ said to Mary Magdalene after resurrection, I did not ascend to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God? How the Lord said about the Father, my God? And how he said about the Father, your Father? Pay attention to what I'm going to say. I did not ascend to my father by nature and your father by adoption and my God by incarnation and your God by nature. Again, again. When he referred to the father as my father, that's by nature. But when he referred to the father as my God, that's by incarnation. Because in incarnation he became man. And when he said, referred to the Father, your God, that's by nature. He's our God. And when he said, by your Father, that's by adoption. So, the adoption is not like here on earth somebody fill some legal paper and do the, adopt, do the adoption? No. The adoption happens through the marriage between us and the Son. That's how we enter into the family of God and become children of God. As St. Paul said in Romans 8, 15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we can cry, Abba, Father, in the fraction of the Epiphany, the Feast of Epiphany, we say, you granted us the grace of adoption through baptism, by which we can call you, Abba, Father. Now, after we are baptized and born again, we can call God our Father. We can call him Abba. And St. Paul continues, the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. If Abuna married a couple here, and somebody said, oh, this couple is not married. So Abuna comes and says, no, I married them. I bear witness. So the Holy Spirit, who united us with the Son, bears witness that we are children of God. So if, if Satan tried to say, no, we are not children of God, the Holy Spirit 
will bear witness. No, we are the children of God. And St. Paul continues in Romans 8, 17. If children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So how we will inherit the kingdom of God? Not by our merits, not by our virtues. No. We will inherit because we are children. Because we are married to Christ. Because we accepted Christ to be our Lord, our God, and our Savior, and our King, and our Bridegroom. So if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. So to summarize, I can't describe it this way. We are children of God the Father. How? Through our marriage with his only begotten son. Who officiated this marriage? Through the action of the Holy Spirit. Where? In the sacraments, in the mysteries of the church. That's why St. John, in John 1, 12, he said, But as many as received him, received him means accepted his proposal. To them, he gave the power to become children of God. Those who accepted this proposal to be the bride of Christ, he gave them the power to be children of God. So in conclusion, we cannot be heirs of the kingdom of heaven unless we are children of God the Father. And we cannot be children of God the Father except through our marriage with the Son. <coughs> and we cannot have relationship with Christ as his bride without the action of the Holy Spirit. And we cannot receive the Holy Spirit away from the church and the sacraments of the church, the mysteries of the church. That's why I told you we'll inherit the kingdom of God not by our merits. Many people ask a question. I know somebody who's not Christian, but he's a good person and good character. Is he going to inherit the kingdom of God? If you understand that we will not inherit the kingdom of God by our merits, not because our good, because we are good, and nobody actually is good. But the only way to inherit, as St. Paul said, if we are children, then we are heirs. So this question about, I know somebody not Christian but good, means you don't understand that the kingdom of heaven is granted to us based on accepting the son to be our bridegroom. Like there is a very, very wealthy man and his son proposed to several girls. One girl accepted this proposal. So this girl only will be eligible to inherit this very wealthy man. If somebody tell me, but the other girls are good, why they will not inherit? <laughs> yeah, they are good, but they cannot. Because they rejected the proposal. They rejected the son. They did not accept the son to be their bridegroom. That's why they will not inherit. And if we understand that we cannot have relationship with Christ, this marriage, without the action of the Holy Spirit, and we cannot receive the Holy Spirit away from the church and its sacrament, that's why St. John Chrysostom said, there is no salvation outside the church. I know somebody who has a wonderful relationship with God, but he doesn't come to church. He doesn't like the institutions of the church. But he has a wonderful relationship with God. I wonder how he will be united with Christ. How this marriage with the bridegroom will happen. Without baptism, without confession, without uh, communion, without chrismation. So there is no salvation 
outside the church. I hope I was able to simplify this topic as much as I could. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. Uh, any question for the first le lecture? So I have a question for the theological part. Um, what's a good way to explain that the Father is not above when we're saying the Father is a source and then later we said the Father is the cause of begotten and proceeding? So then how do you explain that the Father is not above or you know is greater than the other two as Hypostasis. I said above us. No, I mean when we say he's the source. So it seems like he's the source for the Son and the Holy Spirit. Or he's the cause of but the begotten. But this doesn't mean he is greater than them. Yeah. The Son is begotten from the Father, but they are equal in essence. So there is no greatness. And this difference in function doesn't make one greater than the other. For example, uh, all of us who are born from our parents, this doesn't mean, in essence, we are greater, uh, the, the, our parents are greater than us. It's different function, different. The, the Father is the source, Son is begotten, and the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father. But this doesn't mean the Father is greater than them. It's just different function. Any question? For some of the for some Actually, it's not a question; it's a request. Can we have the PowerPoint, you say, Edna, please? Sure. Thank you. So, Edna, I have a question. Um, I came across this new thing that was like coming up in the Protestant Church, and it was the Latter Day Saints. So they said that they believe in the Trinity, and that there's God the Father and God the Son. But because there is a father and son, there has to be God the mother. So how do you, I know that's like obviously not true, but like what would you tell them? I tell them, as I said yesterday, theology is done by revelation. What God revealed to us about himself, that is the truth. Theology cannot be done by speculation. Okay. Do you have any reference in the scripture or patristic writing about a, th a fourth being called God the Mother? They didn't say that there was anything like saying that, but whenever they mentioned the Bible, they were talking about how like when the Bible mentions the bride, that would be God the Mother. The bride is us. Yeah. It's very clear. And St. Paul when he said, I betrothed you, how we are uh, God the Mother. No. And when somebody, you know, comes with a new idea, you can ask them, what is your reference? Is there a reference? And the reference should be a valid reference, not just somebody made a theory or speculation and wrote an article. That's not the reference. Reference should be the scripture, early church fathers before the spirit of the churches. So do you have any reference, any verse in the Bible? speaks about God, the mother, there is nothing. So just theology is done by revelation, what's revealed to us, because God is incomprehensible. I cannot make theory about that. When we teach the difference between Catholic and, uh, and Coptic, the, the point uh, that the Holy Spirit is uh, proceed from the only the Father, how can we explain it by an easy way? Okay, again, what's our reference? The scripture. O only In John the, chapter, chapter 15, 15 it mentioned. says, yeah. who proceeds from the Father? Yeah. Although he said, whom I will send. So if the Father is proceeding from Father and Son, the Lord Jesus Christ would have said, who proceeds from the Father and myself. But he did not say this. And for 11th century, the church spoke only about proceeding from the Father. And when we say proceeding from the Father and the Son, 
then the hypothetical attribute will be confused, confounded. Because now there are two origins, not one origin. The father will be the origin, and the son also will be origin. But we said the hypothetical attributes are very unique. Paternity is for the father, and filiation for the son, inspiration for the Holy Spirit. We were confused about the word the substance. Can we use it or, or not nowadays? If you use it right now, substance right now, when I tell you substance, do you think about person or about essence right now? Hmm? It's about essence, right? What is the substance of this? You are not going to tell me it is horizontal and vertical, uh, you, uh, you're going to say it's wood. So that's the essence, right? What I explained about the substance, I just want to, to make sure when you read early church fathers and they use substance as hypostasis, you will not be confused. Because in the fourth century, substance, actually you were writing in Greek at that time, but the translation that made they translated hypostasis into substance. Because literally, hypo means the sub, stands means stasis. So substance is literally hypostasis. But now, in, in our language, substance means essence. Like the word Coptic. Coptic means what? Egyptian. Egyptos. But now when we say Coptic, means Christian. Okay, so the, the use of the word change over years. And we need actually to be careful when I, I refer to a certain word, how this word was understood at that time. Yeah. Coptic right now doesn't mean Muslims. Coptic right now means Christians. But literally, the word Coptic means Egyptian. So you can say Coptic Muslim or Coptic Christian, but now in our usage right now, it means Christian. Abuna, Sayedna, talking about the different the, the words in different eras, I heard from a Jewish guy that when they refer to the Virgin Mary, that she's not a virgin because in the Hebrew uh, scripture, they refer to her as a girl, not to a virgin. So it's the same thing in Arabic when we say Azra or Fateh. Back then it was a Fateh, but it does mean like Azra. But so how they talk, just picking on the, 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 the scripture, as in the Hebrew, it said uh, girl, Fateh, not uh, a virgin. Yes, the Hebrew word means young girl or virgin, both. So. Simeon, the elder one, he was translating Isaiah 7. And if anyone in his place, he would choose the word young girl, not virgin, because that makes more sense. So this revelation that happened to him, and don't try it, no, choose virgin, don't use it. That's why in the Septuagint translation for the Old Testament, they use the word Parthenia, which means virgin, not the word that means young girl. And when, you know, the New Testament is, is in Greek. When it is quoted in Matthew, behold the virgin, you will find it in Greek Parthenia, because there are two different words in Greek. So Isaiah definitely would not change, uh, sorry, Simeon the elder would not change a word. But if word has two meaning, he chose the, the meaning that make, makes sense, young girl. But when the angel appeared to him and told him, no, use Barthenia, you know, and, and that's the, the one that's used in the Septuagint uh, translation. So God intended here uh, to, to explain that the Messiah will be born of a virgin. Uh, Sayedna, uh, 
we know that God revealed himself as a trinity, but um, why he's not four person? Uh, because three person are, are enough to practice love between them, a relationship, as you said. But what isn't two person are not enough? And if he's two person would ask why he's not three, and if he's three would not, I know some, some fathers try to explain why God is not three or not, uh, it's not two or four. Yes, I, I, I am aware of this. And I will tell you what they said. And, and their answer is, is convincing. But, but the simple answer to your question, that's who God is. That's how he revealed himself to us. So there is no question here why he's not two. But they say two can be a selfish love. For, for the love to be unconditional, limitless, and uh, it's not selfish, then it's shared between three. Like between two, it will be a, a, a selfish love. Uh, that's why it is not, uh, it's not two but three. But, uh, and with all my respect to these answers, it's trying to make sense of a revelation. But the revelation is a revelation without whether, whether you make sense of it or you don't make sense of it. It's, it's yeah, how God is, that's who he is. Right. Yes, more. دلوقتي لما الملاك ظهر ليوسف وقال له لا تكف ان تاخذ تاخذ مريم امراتك. دلوقتي اللي هم الميدل سكول فيري هارد ان احنا نقول لهم Uh, امراتك او يور وايف لان هم دلوقتي ميني كويشنز هاو كان اكسبلين تو ذيم ذس از ات شود بي شي ستيل فيرجن ايفن اف هي كان تيكس هير از ا وايف اول حاجه ان اف تو بيرسونز ار ميريد ان ذا كورت اند سام تايمز ات هابن فور اميجريشن بيربوسز اور وات ايفر ذي ميري ان ذا كورت بات ذا ميريج از نوت كونسميتد يت Legally, they are wife, they are husband and wife, but they are still, both are virgins. And I know cases, they, they married in the court just for immigration purposes. They did not consummate the marriage except after the crowning ceremony. So legally, they are married. But the consummation of the marriage did not happen. So both of them are virgins. This was the situation with St. Mary to protect her civil rights. But on the other side, if an angel appeared to a girl right now, and the angel said to the girl, you will have a son, and this son will be, يعني, that's يعني, his character. Do you think the, the, the girl will be surprised No, خلاص يعني أي girl she will understand that none after I get married I will have this son, right? But Saint Mary was surprised and said to the angel, "How can this be be for me? And I don't know a man." And at this time she was betrothed to Joseph. So if if she is يعني planning to consummate the marriage, why she ask this question? So this question in itself means she vowed her virginity. She vowed her virginity. San Jerome has a wonderful article about the perpetual virginity of Saint Mary. And just if you go to the internet and search it for perpetual virginity by Saint Jerome, he, it's a beautiful article. Or maybe يعني, Abuna can find it on the internet and share it with the servants. Beautiful, beautiful article by Saint Jerome explaining the perpetual virginity of Saint Mary. Thank you, Sayyid. We have a picture with Sayyidna. As you have a seat, Sayyidna come here in the middle. And Madeleine will take a picture for Sayyidna and Abuna Felixino Sami. Then we have a break until, يعني, 
توتن مثلا توتن ويل بي هير سو لاست ميك ذا لاست كيو ان اي ان عربي وسيدنا وتش ريلي سبمتد بيفور تو تو مارو ويل بريزنت اون ذا سكرين اند سيدنا ويل انسر ذا كويشن فيو كان كم دونت يعني دونت موف جاست بي سيتس ان يور بليس اند ويل تيك ا بيكتشر توجذر بس ذا بيبول اون ذا سايد كم بليز توجذر كلوزر تو بي ايفري ثينج وانتوا قاعدين حاجه حلوه خالص عشان ايه ما نعملش دوشه ونسيف التايم يعني Finally, O Lord, hear us when we pray. Thankfully, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Christ Jesus, our Lord. The kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, love of God, the Father, the grace of his only begotten Son, our Lord God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Commune and gift of the Holy Spirit.